Ryan EFL meeting last week with a few points that were discussed. I suppose the the, the key one that comes out is the transfer window and the thoughts of uh, changing when it ends. Yeah, there was a bit of a debate on that uh, with all the clubs um, to follow suit with what the the Premiership have done by making the deadline shut just before the prior to the start of the first league game. Um, slight difficulty also is that the the Championship League One and League Two. Uh, obviously start a week earlier than the champion uh, than the Premiership, so that would make a difference. There was a bit of a debate on it. Um, a lot of clubs, the majority of clubs, felt that we should be looking at it and consider moving it early. Now, personally, I understand the reasons why we would make it, you know, shut it off earlier from the point of view of your squad and everything else going forward. But I'm just a bit concerned. You know, I, I look at it financially as well and think, well, if I can sign a couple of players towards the end of August, um, then it saves me two months two months pay let's be honest so that maybe I can pay them a bit more or I can you know get players in within the budget um, so I think there's and I also don't think necessarily we should just be following suit because the because the Premiership do it I don't my personal view is why should we be doing it just to hang on their coattails all the time which probably isn't right I think it's we should, the EFL as a brand needs to look at well you know if the Premiership are shutting off in the first week in, in August then if we are the end of August, then all the media are going to be speaking about is EFL. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good for the 72 EFL clubs to get the exposure for the full month. And I think that's more important than anything else. It's an interesting discussion, which is going to run a bit, because even <coughs> if the Premier League take it on board, it doesn't mean that the other teams in Europe are going to follow suit. No, well, I mean, they're talking just now about some of the clubs in Europe, some of the leagues in Europe are going to follow suit. But, I mean, I did ask that question at the meeting about, you know, it's put you at a disadvantage as well because let's be honest, you could be competing with other leagues, even at our, you know, even the League One, you could be competing with other leagues to try and get players. It could be the Scottish market as an example, um, and if the Scottish market are are not are open to the end of August, then they've got an advantage of signing players longer. So potentially, you know, you could get signings that you would be wanting to make as well. So I understand. I think there's reasons both ways. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. There's arguments both ways. Um, but I do, I do believe that even for the brand and for the 72 clubs to be a bit different and, and have get the exposure that we all deserve rather than everything being concentrating or being lost on deadline day and all the, what that happens in the Premiership. Another interesting one about making sure the team's put out a full strength team. It's an interesting one because again, even if a team's safe at the end of the season they want to play youngsters yeah. or, whereby other ones are fighting for their lives. I spoke to Paul about this one actually. Um, and I think he was a bit concerned at first, but when you start to explain it, the way are, whereby the proposal is that from the 1st of March that you have to play 10 players from the previous 18 in those games between from there to the end of the season, which I understand. Um, realistically, are we going to... <laughs> 10 is probably quite a good number for us because it's not as if we've got the, the huge a huge squad where you, you've got plenty of options anyway. Um, and let's be honest, we should hopefully be either challenge and hopefully challenge at the top end of the table so we're going for things that are positive but I don't really see an issue with it I understand why clubs you know might want to try and pl play fringe players and not play the, the normal 18 I understand why they would do that but I think you've got to look at the whole bigger situation in the whole league as well which could potentially could affect a lot of other clubs Additional subs as well the discussion of allowing another player uh, on the bench to come on, so uh, again, another interesting one. Yeah, they, they, they threw this at us as well yes, and last week about whether we would be interested in a fourth substitute, which has been, I think it's been trialled elsewhere. Um, the feeling amongst the clubs was no, they weren't they weren't keen on looking at that at this moment in time, and it was parked. Um, again, my feeling is it just slows down the game once more again, if you've got four substitutes. Um, if it was me, if I was doing anything, I would say if somebody came off in the first half, then you could be entitled to a fourth substitute, because then if, usually if they come off in the first half, it's through injury, um, normally speaking. So, but you know, I just think if you've got four substitutes, it could be eight substitutes. It slows the game down, and I don't think that makes it a entertaining spectacle. It should be. Yeah, I've always had like a fit and proper uh, conduct and uh, financial parts in mm. for owners. Another discussion about that and uh, uh, the conduct of them. Yeah, they've asked the clubs how they feel about looking for feedback on how they make, sure they make it quite strict, the, the fit and proper person test. I think it's a very difficult one for everybody to be happy with. Uh, some of the clubs spoke about, you know, well, you know, you know, we're not in their mind to try and put obstacles in the way of, you know, the clubs being bought over at times. Um, I do believe that, you know, obviously you need to be careful that 
of owners, you need, you need to look at some of the situations that some clubs find themselves in, um, because of you know the way the ownership has worked out. Um, look, thankfully, it's not something we need to worry about. Chairman's been here for twenty one years, so we're in a good place just now. Um, with a steady chairman, a local businessman as well, which I think a lot of clubs nowadays the way they are they aren't necessarily run by local people. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas at least at Shrewsbury, we've got a local local people in charge. Apart from me. <laughs> You've been taken on board. Before the meeting as well, the uh, the new broadcast deal with Sky was announced. A discussion about that as well. Again, I suppose it's interesting to have another long term deal. Yeah, I think it's good for um, it's good for the clubs. It's good for for us going forward to be able to budget and know that the the money's up slightly. It's just unfortunate that the championship at the moment get the vast majority of it. So. Um, continue where we are in the league table it'll be very beneficial but no it, most of the money goes to the championship um, um obviously like a lot less than league one and league two but any small difference in, in a rise in, in money's coming from tv is it's got to be good for all the all the clubs um because you know even if it's 50 grand or 100 grand it's a it's a lot of money to us i suppose for clubs as well it helps in the sort of long-term planning Knowing that for the next say, five yeah. years or so, there's going to be a certain amount coming. Definitely, to know that you can budget for that for the next five years and know where you are, it definitely helps because it's it's a it's a reasonable number, and when you're doing your budgets. Saturday as well, we broke the eight thousand mark, so good to see the place uh, fuller. Mm. It was brilliant. No, it was absolutely fantastic. The supporters really got behind the team, and it was a good atmosphere, and hopefully everybody enjoyed it. My worry before the game was if we got an eight thousand plus crowd that. You know, in the past since I've been here, we've never actually played that well. <laughs> um, but I thought on Saturday we did play well. Um, we all felt shows how far we've come in the year or so that we're actually all walking away from having just drawn with Blackburn Rovers and the size of their club and their budget, etc. And for, because they scored a late equaliser, we're actually disappointed only to take a point. It just shows how far we've come. But no, I was delighted. You know, we tried to market the game as much as we possibly could. The local area. Definitely a lot of people responded. Um, we're still selling fan cards, so that's positive as well. Nearly 600 fan cards now. Um, so and it seemed they seem to go a lot better. We've had some mm-hmm. teething problems with that. But um, no, it was great to see the place um, rocking, and especially when we scored the goal. It was, it was fantastic um, atmosphere about the place. And uh, they really, the supporters really got behind the team. And just hopefully they can all come back. That's <coughs> the next Saturday's come to up. You would hope that the majority <coughs> of the yeah. town fans who came we'll come back yeah. again or some more uh, try it but you look at it Blackburn Rovers obviously will be an attraction I mean they brought 1600 of their own supporters so 6-6 six, six of our own roughly 6-8 of our own um, is that right? yeah um, it's, it's decent numbers and we just hope we can get most of them back I think the weather plays a part as well and I think it's, I looked at the forecast today for, for the weekend it's to be dry and sunny so that's a positive as well and, but hopefully people enjoyed themselves at the game Saturday so, <coughs> so excuse me the team and how the team have improved dramatically those who haven't been for a while and hopefully we tempted them back they've come and enjoyed it and they'll come back again next week that's the thing now with the cricket season over other bits and pieces kids back at school but yep. people looking for things to do on a Saturday top of the table at the moment still playing good football yeah. so on the pitch we can't do much better no I think we're definitely playing attractive football which is entertaining which is for what people want to come and see and as you say you know the golf seasons are slowing down and, and cricket etc as well and the schools are back um, hopefully the numbers will con- continue to rise the only thing that springs with success is managers tend to be looked at and uh, with Paul all the fans are going give him a X year deal or something so is that just a case of carry on as we are yeah I mean Paul's in a, a rolling contract I think he's alluded to before so um, you know, I think we're all quite comfortable with Paul's situation and obviously he's, Paul and Chris are both doing really well the players are doing really well um, and we're trying to build on that we're not obviously trying to move Paul on or anything like that and I think Paul feels if you look at Paul's history he's been at clubs for, for lengthy periods as well so that's part of the attraction too that you know, he is um, loyal to this, the, the, the club he's been at. He's got a really good relationship with myself and the chairman. Mm. Uh, we got on really well, we talk a lot. So um, that, it's not one I'm worried about just now. It's, 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 as long as you've got success, then it's, that's a positive. I suppose the funny thing as well, to see a Shrewsbury Town manager actually linked with jobs elsewhere for once. Yeah, that's it, it just shows the job he's doing, to be fair. Um, I think everybody's starting to sit up and take note that, you know, we've started well this season, uh, albeit it's only nine games or whatever so it's it's not you know we've still a lot of games to go but I think um, the the turnaround has been quite magnific- magnificent really when you look at where we were this time last year 
Um, you look at the points tally we've got already this season, which was I think it was Christmas or something by the time we got that mm-hmm. last year. It's it's amazing, but we are playing good football as well, and I think it's it's attractive. People are enjoying it, and coming down to Montgomery Waters Meadow, they're actually coming to expect to win win games again, which is positive too, especially when you're playing likes of Wigan and Blackburn Rovers that you think we've got four points out of those two teams who are big, big clubs with big, big supports and, and much bigger budgets. <coughs> with the game, we normally ask for feedback, so a few bits mm. and pieces for the weekend, the main one being the catering. Yeah, we've passed them on again to MPM and uh, we'll continue to do that. Um, there's been some issues at the weekend, which obviously they're keen to in- engage and try and improve as well. I was talking to Mark last week about things, so you know we'll pass everything on that we possibly can. We had some ticketing issues at the previous home game, which and the fan card issues, which by all accounts we seem to resolve most of. Um, but we're always welcoming any feedback, uh, good or bad, because at the end of the day we need to know about it in order for us to be able to fix it. Uh, but it's pleasant to see that most of the fan card issues seem to have been dropping down. We expected some teething problems with that uh, because it's new and it's um, new schemes, but hopefully we're, we're getting there with that and it's making it an easier uh, experience to buy a ticket for a Shrewsbury game or add it onto the fan card and come to the game. With the MPM thing, is it a case of just speaking to them on a weekly basis for updates <coughs> on what's going on and just passing all that feedback back to them? Yeah, I understand the supporters' parliament are going to be meeting um, MPM as well to have a discussion. Uh, MPM are keen to engage and use the supporters' parliament as a vehicle to try and work together, and that's what it's all about. It's all about all three parties working together to try and improve, you know, the match day experience. And you look at you know the catering. It's a very difficult one because not everybody has the same taste in food. Um, and obviously you've got a 15 minute window at half time to try and feed what we'd 8,000 people here on Saturday. You know, and it's trying to get the, the queues down and manage that and try and satisfy everybody. And it is, it is difficult, uh, but hopefully MPM will, will come up trumps in, in the long term. Yeah.